Hey. <laughs> Look at this shit. Really? It's not even Halloween yet. Jesus, Mary, and the shepherds. Would you look what Mother Nature is doing to us? Freezing our nods off here. Walking along. Well, welcome to uh, fall in upstate New York. Looks like Mother Winter has uh, pulled, the, pulled the plug on uh, Injun Summer. And, uh, ramped up the, uh, the slush and the snow salt. So, uh, still beautiful, but um, a little annoying. It's just cold rain, that's all it is. It's a little wintry, wintry mix. <coughs> so last night I was uh, going down a click hole on YouTube, and uh, I came across uh, Russell Brand. Some of you may know Russell Brand. Very famous British actor, comedian, also has a podcast where he interviews uh, a lot of the um, people that I enjoy listening to. I think are on the leading edge of um, exploring consciousness and waking up, and uh, Russell Brand being one of them. Russell Brand, I think, has really done a lot of the great inner work. Man, if you see that guy 20 years ago, he was a mess. And uh, he took himself out of a flat spin, and um, he's he's uh, he's back on the bus. How you doing? Uh, How's Leo? Good. You mind if I take a picture of Leo? Oh, no. <laughs> That's Leo. He's he's feeling his. How old is he now? Four months. Four months. He's getting to, he's getting to know how to attack. It's <laughs> <laughs> a cool looking dog. Anyway, um, Russell Brand, uh, he has on authors and speakers like uh, Eckhart Tolle and um, my man Muji and uh, Rupert Spira, Spira Spira. Um, really great guests. If you're into that kind of thing, check out Russell Brand. But he was talking last night uh, about uh, prayer, which is... Uh, something I've really uh, kind of struggled with growing up. I was raised a uh, big New York Irish family, so that makes me a recovering Catholic. And, you know, in uh, in Catholicism, there's, all, for me anyway, there's all kinds of hurdles to overcome. You know, they taught me all kinds of things that just did not, even as a kid, I, I was going, no, something's not right about that. It didn't resonate with it. It wasn't doing what they said it was. It's like if I show up, say say this stuff the right way and uh, plead my case, then I'm going to be okay. What? Yeah. It just made me more fearful and uh, zero results. And uh, years later, as when things in my life just became so intolerable that I, 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 I had to find another way. At some point, we've all reached a tipping point in our lives where we've gone, there's got to be another way. To quote the book of John, you know, to be in the world but not of the world. You know, how do I live my life here and still experience it um, in, a, in a way that's not so, so awful at times? And... Um, Prayer is a big, has been a big part of that. And, I, and, you know, my conception of prayer was the old school way where, you should, you know, you kneel down, you clasp your hands, and you, you energize really hard, and you, you go, please give me X, Y, Z. <clears throat> That's the way I was taught to do it. Occasionally, you might luck out and, uh, and have something magical occur but I'm pr I know that for me and uh, I guess a lot of people we've all experienced what would be considered uh, a failure a praying you know you ask for something really hard you want it really intently and it it doesn't show up and then you go what 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 am I praying for so then I realized I, uh, years later, when I was reading A Course in Miracles, there's a section in The Course in Miracles 
called True Prayer. And uh, it said, True Prayer is not a prayer of supplication of any kind. To ask for what you already have is academic. Um, in true prayer, you let go of the things you think you need. I'm paraphrasing. Let go of the things you think you need. And there, they go into God's hands and they become your gifts to Him because they tell Him that you would have no other gods before Him. Now, I know that sounds like an offering. When I read that the first time, I actually misread it. You know, God doesn't need your gifts. They're, only, they're gifts you give to yourself. You know, God doesn't, quote unquote, need anything from what I've come to realize. Realize, see with real eyes, real eyes. Uh, they're actually gifts to you. The gifts you give to yourself when you recognize that what you, you really, the things that you think you want, if you really look at it closely, you're looking for the experience that you think these things would bring, the release of the fear of whatever this thing is that's holding sway over you. I remember when I was uh, living in LA, so maybe 25 years ago, maybe more, and I had just landed this really big TV show. You know, this is the next one. Now, this is the big show. This is this has put me on the block, right? And I was working hard for it, running every day, three, four miles a day, getting in good shape. And uh, there's a space up in Los Angeles called Lake Hollywood. Many of you probably seen it. It's the where they shot the opening scenes to the Andy Griffith show. At the same time that this was happening. My mom got really sick and had been hospitalized. And a doctor visit turned into an emergency room. Emergency room turned into admission. Admission turned into a stay. A stay, tests, longer stay. It, it went on for almost a month. And it was devolving quickly. And I was, here I am focused on the show. My mom is 3,000 miles away in New York, and I'm freaking out. I'm running along. I'll never forget it. I was running along, and I'm praying, right, praying with all my heart. I'm going, God, God, please don't let my mom die. Please, oh, my God, please. Please, please, I'll do it. <laughs> I'm making, you know, making bargain, bargains with God or the universe, interestingly. If you, sep if you hyphenate the word bargain, it means to bar gain. So you're barring gain by, by it, it, all bargain comes from a sense of lack, bargaining for anything, it comes from a sense of, 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 of neediness. So I was running along in this really stressed out state. I keep my eye on the road this morning. Really stressed out state. Please don't let this, I was asking for things. And suddenly, oh, it's like this revelation. It just stopped me in my tracks. I literally had to stop running because I, I couldn't see the, I, I couldn't see where I was going. Like everything just went white. And this revelation came to me and I went, oh my God, you're right. I said, oh God, yes, if it's her time to go, let her go just show me how to be okay with it that was the true prayer show me the gift of true prayer and wham i was stand i stopped and it was like this column of energy rolled through me where um i realized i was i was praying from that from that place of lack or fear or supplication and uh that was the beginning for me to let go of uh, or, or look at things differently, look, look at how I was actually asking for things uh, of the world and in the world, and then getting what I really wanted, which was to get out of the prayers of the head and to receive the answers of prayer within the heart. And that's how I found the spirit 
answers. They don't answer the prayers in your head. They always, always, always answer the prayers in your heart. I wasn't there, but I, I kind of get an idea that when uh, Jesus was hanging on the cross, he wasn't praying for toys. You know, what could you ask or get me out of here? The prayer of that heart, which I think is the prayer of all of our hearts, is show me how to be well at peace with everything that's going on around me. All of this. Show me how to be okay with this. Show me how to be at peace. Real prayer of the heart. So today, um, I'm gonna, I don't think I even have to pray. I already know it's given. That's a real prayer. When you know something's already given, when you know the peace is already there. So have a peaceful day. And if you're struggling with the prayers of your head, remember the, the longest journey you'll ever make is the 10 inches from your head to your heart. So if you're looking at someone straight on, it's only about 10 inches from the head to the heart. But if you're looking for above, they're right on top of each other. They're in the same column. So higher perspective will allow you to look down and see that, you know, the head and the heart are not separate. And once the heart prayers are answered, the, the head prayers will show up. It may take a little time, but uh, that's where faith comes in. Everybody has faith, but faith in nothing leads to madness. Faith in the things of the world, if you think the things of the world are going to bring you the peace for your heart, you're gonna find out that doesn't work. If you think you don't have faith, or other people don't have faith, just get up and watch how they project their day is going to happen. Not another one of these. Like, like I didn't get up this morning and say, oh shit, snow. Actually, I did, but I barreled through that. And um, so I'm talking to you, I'm not even noticing the snow. So have faith. Pray for uh, the prayer of your heart. And um, have a great day. <laughs> Look at this. Still beautiful. Even though it's freaking cold. Even the geese are complaining in the background. Hey, I sound like Brian Reagan. Hey, geese, why do you keep going what? 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 What?